What potential impact will the presidential order of August 8, 2020 have on your business? In this video, we will discuss this. Watch to the end of the video for key takeaways regarding the presidential actions. Let's jump into the video. This is Business Media TV. My name is Mimi, the Business Advisor. On this channel, we advise business owners on how to start, grow, and sustain their businesses. If you are new to this channel, we would like to invite you to subscribe to our channel so you can get more information about business. Lately, there has been a lot of questions regarding the stimulus programs by the federal government. Due to the importance of these to business owners, we will be covering these programs in more detail. President Donald Trump on August 8, 2020, bypassed the nation's lawmakers, issuing one executive order and three memorandums to defer payroll taxes and replace an expired unemployment benefit. These actions, if implemented, would provide $400 in added unemployment benefits for those out of work because of the pandemic and the fair payroll taxes for those earning less than $100,000 a year. Unemployed workers had been receiving a, suppl a supplement of $600, a benefit that expired on July 31st. President Donald Trump's executive actions also seek to extend a moratorium on student loan payments and consider ways to halt some evictions and foreclosures. States are expected to cover $100 or 25% of the cost of the additional unemployment benefits, although it's unclear if governors would participate and how long it would take to implement such a plan. If you've been getting value from this, please consider liking this video and subscribing to our channel. The White House Memorandum on Student Loan Deferral moves to waive student loan interest until December 31st, 2020, extending the current relief under the CARES Act that is set to expire September 30th by two months. Payments are scheduled to restart on January 1st, 2021. However, President Trump's memo applies to loans held by the Department of Education, which doesn't include privately held student loans such as those through a bank. The payroll tax holiday seeks to defer your federal tax withholding, which means employees will take home more money per paycheck temporarily. Since this is a deferral and not tax forgiveness, you may have to pay those taxes after the deferral period passes without having to pay additional interest or tax. The memo contains language to explore avenues for eradicating the deferred tax altogether. For employers, they may need to adjust their benefit software to follow the other coverage period and readjust it afterwards. So there may be potentially additional costs of hiring technical staff to make the changes if the business owner is not tech savvy or hiring surge HR staff to help during this period. President Trump's memorandum covers a four month period from September 1st, 2020 through December 31st, 2020 for people earning less than $100,000 a year or less than $4,000 per two weeks paycheck. Please note that payroll taxes fund Social Security and Medicare, so a reduction would take money away from Medicare recipients. On eviction, the CARES Act banned late fees and eviction filings until July 21st on properties backed by federal mortgage programs, for example with Fannie Mae, or those that accept federal funds like HUD. The executive order does not address stipulations on evictions. As far as the unemployment benefits are concerned, following President Trump's memorandum, the federal government will contribute $300 of the $400 payment. To fund this, President Trump is looking at using leftover or unspent FEMA funds 
to pay unemployment benefit. Individual states would be responsible for the remaining $100 per person per week retroactively starting August 1st. It remains to be seen if the responsibilities for some of these benefits or payments will not be passed on to business owners. There is also the issue of legality because the Constitution gives Congress control over federal spending. Therefore, President Trump may not have the legal authority to issue binding executive orders on how money should be spent during the coronavirus pandemic. Right after the President's order was announced, the Democrats had their response to the President's order. In an emailed statement addressing the president's order, Biden said that such a move would undermine the entire financial footing of Social Security. These policy announcements provide little real help to families. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Senate Democratic leader Chuck Schumer said in a statement following the executive actions. Instead of passing a bill, now President Trump is cutting families' unemployment benefits and pushing states further into budget crisis, forcing them to make devastating cuts to life or debt services. They pointed out that Trump's housing plan provides no assistance to help pay rent. Take your ways. So these are some recommendations that's a way forward concerning these actions. Number one, expand the use of leftover or unspent FEMA funds to pay unemployment benefits at 100%. So states do not have to use already stretched out dollars. Number two, since payroll taxes fund Social Security and Medicare, a reduction would take money away from Medicare recipients. Recommend setting aside funding to cover the difference so that the Medicare recipients continue to get money. And number three, the president's office should clearly address stipulations on evictions and provide relief for landlords that rely on rent money for their livelihood. Question of the day. How do you think the executive order will affect your business, especially the others pertaining to payroll tax and unemployment benefits? Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.